How's everybody doing? Thank you so much for coming to our session, braving the hallways of uh, filled people and, and getting your seat here. Uh, we feel really privileged to be able to spend this time with you. Um, my name is Mark Jewett. I work at Tableau. Uh, and more importantly, um, you, we get to spend some time uh, today with uh, Sharon. So Sharon Patil is uh, a program manager in Vanguard's cloud group. Uh, and uh, we've been talking to Sharon for a while as they've gone through this journey of moving to the cloud. Uh, he's been a part of that whole journey. Uh, and, and why we were very excited to spend this session on asking uh, Sharon to come present is because he's been through a lot of what you guys might be thinking about. And so he's got uh, practical advice to share. He's got 20 years at Vanguard. And so he very much knows um, what Vanguard's trying to accomplish as a business and how IT uh, is, a, is a key part of the solution for that. Uh, and then has been most recently part of this cloud journey uh, that they are on. And so we're just so pleased uh, to have him. Uh, my role here is really just to set up a few things about uh, Tableau, to talk about uh, the engineering work that we've done with AWS um, to make sure that uh, Tableau and AWS work together in the ways that you all would expect. Um, and that, for us, really starts with data. Uh, and so we wake up every day. You know, different people are motivated by different things. The things that we're motivated by every day, this is our mission statement, is to help people see and understand data. Uh, and we think that that matters more than ever. Uh, we believe that um, the companies and the organizations and the people uh, that are most effectively able to manage and manipulate and mine their data for insights will be the ones that will win, to say it simply, and that the ones who struggle with that and aren't able to, to, to make that change, we think those are the companies and the organizations that will struggle. Uh, and so this is a, a very you know, heartfelt mission that we pursue every day. About 15 years ago, we did something that was considered very innovative at that time, which is, is we made it a hell of a lot easier to ask and answer questions with your data. Uh, and so the interface that you see there uh, made it possible to just drag and drop and ask questions and find out why and find new insights in your data and to use visualization as a key way to do that. Uh, and it really unlocked the creativity and the curiosity of a lot of people in the organizations that were using Tableau, uh, and they felt this great power to be able to do that. Uh, and over 15 years, we have built a platform to support that process. So that platform uh, involves everything from how do you connect to all your different data sources out there, I'm not gonna ask the question, but if I asked how many of you have one data source that you have to deal with, no one would raise their hand. It's all over the place. It's in a lot of different, different places, AWS and otherwise. And so being able to connect to that varied set of data, uh, being able to prepare that data so that it's really well suited for analysis, and so being able to clean up that data and, and put it into a shape that works best for the analysts that you uh, uh, work with, um, very important, being able to govern that process. Not everyone should be able to see everything. Some people should be able to see a lot so that they can make sure the right capacity exists uh, to run the system, that the right data uh, access is being provided, but not too much. This, this idea of governance overall um, that is a very important function that IT continues to serve for the business. And so governance built right into that platform all the way up through the analytics, which is that process that I mentioned, mining that data uh, for, the, for insights that we might realize are there and insights that we might not. Uh, and then up to the act of getting it out to the broader organization, uh, whether that's shared out on phones or out through browsers, even client desktop applications, being able to get to that um, and then discuss it and share and comment and, and, and send it around to other people. Um, that act of collaboration is just as important often um, as the act of finding the insights to start with. Um, that is all done in the context of the security and compliance that I talked about. 
And one of the things that Tableau has worked pretty hard on is the extensibility to be able to, at, to make Tableau do what you want it to do, to customize it, to integrate it into the systems that you want to use. Uh, and so that has resulted in deployments both large and small uh, and um, in a variety of different uh, environments. And the, and the environment that we're um, most interested in today is the, is the work that we do with AWS. Um, it is very common for customers today to come and have one of a few discussions with us. The first one is, um, hey, my company has decided or my organization has decided that we are going to have a cloud first or a cloud primary strategy. So we're assessing everything that we have and we're thinking about what it takes to move it to the cloud. And so the work with, with AWS is really important, not just to natively integrate to the services, which I'll show you in just a minute, but to connect to all the rich capability and data that's in AWS today. But also the prescriptive uh, uh, advice on how to deploy. So not only will Tableau connect to AWS services, it will also run on top of AWS infrastructure. And in fact, that's a primary scenario that uh, Sharon will talk about today. Um, is how do you run Tableau on AWS? Uh, and so that work with AWS has been paramount and it's resulted in uh, the type of diagram that you see here, which is just really just a reflection uh, architecturally of the work that we've done that I, that I mentioned, the engineering work that we've done. Uh, and we found this, this pictorial way of, of displaying this really helpful to help people understand the breadth of what's possible. Uh, and so the, you know, the flow is essentially moving from left to right. It's going from all those different data sources that you have and then going <clears throat> and ending up in analysis in Tableau and that Tableau platform that we talked about. But in the middle, the rich set of AWS services that help us collect and store that information to process, further process that information Right, and then to ultimately model it so that it's ready for analysis. A little bit of an echo on the microphone, I think. Um, and so, uh, you know, some scenarios here that might be helpful to think about. Uh, so taking data from on-premises today, whether that's flat files or in databases, moving it through the various different ways that you can move that to S3, and then using something like uh, glue to extra extract and transform and load that data into Redshift where Tableau has a native connection with Redshift to be able to start to do analysis out of the Redshift data warehouse. Or even using something like Spectrum directly on top of S3 to be able to get to that same Redshift set of interfaces to do analysis in Tableau. Uh, another one is more streaming type of data, more active data. Maybe it's data, social data that you're pulling off uh, the internet through some sort of an API, a REST API. Uh, you're using Kinesis Firehose to pull that data in to S3. Um, and then maybe you're using something like SageMaker to build machine learning models, to do things like you know, sentiment analysis on that social data. And the native connectivity that we have from, uh, from Tableau allows an analyst that's doing that work, that visual analytics that we talked about, to actually connect into those models and run those models in real time. So a data scientist may have created those models, but now the analysts can run them when they need those models to run for the piece of analysis that they're doing. Another big scenario here is data lakes, of course. Huge amounts of information that are transferred and stored in S3, and then using some of the different um, modeling uh, on top with EMR, maybe Spark, uh, and, and being able to take a direct connection from Tableau uh, to mine that data lake for, for analysis. And so you can see some of the, because we've built those paths that are represented by the arrows, the yellow and the green arrows, that's the type of uh, enablement that, that uh, we've really been focused on, hopefully um, to help make your lives easier. Uh, and so some of you might be from these companies. This is just a small example of the companies that we've worked with to take advantage of that architecture that we were just looking at to take advantage of the learning that we're having together with all of you uh, and trying to build that into the very best ways to deploy. A great example of story I love is EA, Electronic Arts. 
Uh, they were a customer that we worked with that essentially has a bunch of different game studios. So they are a classic case of a lot of different data sources. And they were having a tr trouble answering questions like, what does profitability look like across a category of games? And so they did that work with Tableau as the analytics platform. They've deployed in AWS as the infrastructure, and they even use Snowflake, so another partner of, of AWS. Uh, they're working on that to actually accelerate the data warehousing. Um, so, so some really neat scenarios there. But the primary scenario that we want to focus on today and really get into some of the nitty gritty in terms of what that journey looked like moving from Tableau on-premises to Tableau in the AWS cloud is Vanguard. And so without further ado, I'm really uh, excited to uh, have Sharon Patil to the stage. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Mark. Can you hear me now? Well, awesome. Mark, thanks a lot for that introduction of Tableau as well as me. Uh, I'm Sharon Patil, Senior Program Manager at Vanguard, uh, managing multiple analytics platform. And Tableau happens to be one of the key platform for visualization across enterprise. So as we have been going through this journey, we have gone through many of the challenges and wanted to share some of those challenges with you so that it helps you. So looking at the crowd, right, how, just by raise of hand, how many of you use Tableau platform? Almost, uh, it looks like more than 75%. How many of, the, of you are already in cloud? Roughly 50%, I would say. So for those who are still in the process of migration or thinking about it, uh, I'm sure I think you are thinking about like, hey, what are the challenges? I was in your shoes when we started this journey. So I would say it was scary to think about like managing so many platforms to start with, and then thinking about migrating a huge, widely used platform into cloud. I don't want to scare you guys with what we have gone through, but I think it, we have gone through a journey. We have learned a lot. We have addressed a lot of challenges. I would say with confidence that, hey, it can be done. So that said, uh, We will talk about a little briefly for those who don't know. We'll introduce Vanguard, uh, talk about what were the objectives and outcomes we were looking for when we started this journey. Talk about some of the challenges. Uh, many challenges, but I will highlight some of the key challenges. Uh, what architecture and deployment we looked at and we adapted uh, at the end, and then recap and, and uh, do some key takeaways uh, at, to conclude the session. So Vanguard, uh, at its core, a financial company, uh, one of the world's largest investment management companies. Uh, we have roughly or approximately more than uh, 380 low-cost mutual funds and ETFs and growing. Worldwide locations, right, 19 to list here. We are growing, and we have 16,000 uh, employees. We call them crew. Or 5 trillion, trillion in assets. So 20 years back, as Mark was mentioning, when I started, our assets were roughly 500 billion. So from 500 billion to 5 trillion, big uh, business growth uh, in, in the company overall. Apart from the mutual fund and ETFs, we also provide other services like advice, retirement services, and other related financial services. 
So we started Tableau journey back in 2013, 2014. That was when we had our first deployment, uh, and it has become a key visualization platform across Vanguard Enterprise. In almost every business line we have, it's used both internal as well as, as, well as external. Uh, the main deployment is, uh, we have two deployment. One is internal facing for ad hoc visualization, and then we have external facing uh, for our retirement uh, business customers. Si significant growth from 2014 to, to current uh, till date. So as you see, different line of business have been implementing various use cases across the board. Uh, to give you some of the examples, right, uh, analytics dashboard, operational dashboards, uh, things like client report card, and most recently, uh, we have even employee scorecard, which has been really uh, picking up the usage and the growth of Tableau at Vanguard. So as we started thinking about the migration itself, uh, we started uh, really talking about like, hey, what are the different objectives and the outcomes we wanted to, ex we expect out of this, uh, effort, and we wanted to really share some of those objectives and, and uh, see how we address that. So at the end of the day, we wanted to have a better visualization platform for, for our users across uh, different business lines. And there is an enterprise push at Vanguard to migrate, migrate most of the data into cloud. So that was one of the, the key uh, objectives, hi, how do we align the platform with the data migration itself? And as I have been talking about, there is significant growth in the business. And as the business is growing, the usage of the platform itself is, is, is growing pretty quickly. And the on-premise deployment we have has many issues in terms of scalability and the performance. So how do we really architect the solution to meet those goals? Improve performance and scalability uh, as we go along. And primarily, hey, how can we do visualization where the data is moving? Um, so as we move data to cloud, how do we take care of like having a platform where it is closer to the data? Uh, one of the other challenges we have at uh, on-prem is like the ability by the line of business to really measure and charge back uh, the usage. So how do we tackle that challenge? Lastly, uh, to reduce on-prem server footprint as we adopt cloud uh, going forward. So with these objectives in mind, we started looking at some of the cloud native design characteristics, whether it is flexibility, scalability, availability, and security, which clouds provides in some cases, and also really focusing on the auditability of aspect of it, and how do we build the governance and controls around the migration and how the visualization happens with different data sets. So with the objectives and the outcomes uh, we thought about, we started looking at what are the different options, what are the different challenges we might run into. Some of the challenges are security and controls. So it's scary to move anything to cloud without thinking about security and controls. Looking at the architecture and infrastructure, what kind of architecture we want, right? Looking at what options we have. What, is, what are the different licensing model the vendor provides and what works better for the architecture we define. And securing data source connectivity. Uh, so as Mark was saying, it's not one data source. We have probably m many of them. So how do we make sure that the connectivity and the data going back and forth between Tableau and the source are secured? And lastly, I think the big challenge we wanted to tackle was the user and the content migration. 
So I will deep dive into each one of these challenges. Hopefully it will be insightful and, and uh, provide some uh, guidelines for, for your effort as well. So security and controls, being a financial company, it's, it is front and center for Vanguard to think about security. Uh, one of the key um, directive at, at, uh, at Vanguard is making sure the data is encrypted at rest as well as data is encrypted in transit. What that means is when Tableau is trying to access any data from any data sources, making sure that the data where it resides is encrypted, as well as the data when it comes to Tableau is also encrypted, making sure when the data is in transit is also encrypted. Uh, so we had to uh, work with different uh, data source owners, right, and, and uh, within different line of business, making sure that those databases are encrypted before we access the data. And we had to work with Tableau uh, in many cases to get the right driver to connect securely to those data sources. Um, I think we have enabled most of the key data sources in a, in a secure way. We have uh, probably, I think, one more to go. And the other aspect of it is uh, having the right authentication and access control. So we looked at different, uh, the way we implemented on-prem through, through Active Directory, uh, and, and I think how that works and how it needs to be in the cloud. For most part, I think we were lucky that I think we were able to adapt the existing model we have on-prem in the cloud without any major issues. Data governance and risk and controls is one of the other key uh, challenge we had to deal with. Uh, there were no systematic uh, controls when people access data, uh, whether it is generic data or a PII data, so we had to work with line of business uh, risk teams and the governance teams to make sure that we have a process uh, in practice to, to ensure when, when people have access to this data, it is going through the right process and approvals. So I think the other key thing, right, for us to be really successful is defining the right architecture. Um, we looked at, hey, we have a cluster on-prem. Why can't we just lift and shift into cloud? Um, easy thing to think about it, right? but we are not going to really accomplish anything in terms of uh, addressing our, our uh, objectives we have established, whether it is scalability or whether it is making it more flexible for our business to, to really uh, have the flexibility to, as their business grows to ha add more capacity to their, their environment. So we thought about re-architecting Tableau altogether as we move uh, this workload to cloud. Uh, in a similar fashion, hey, can we establish one enterprise Tableau cluster which is more scalable, uh, but it also had some uh, deficiency in terms of tackling some of the outcome we were expecting, like, like flexibility for each line of business to have their own cluster, uh, their ability to really scale their own clusters and ability to really uh, measure and plan uh, their business growth. So we ended up with a multi-cluster Tableau architecture. Uh, we also looked at a hosting options which Tableau provides. Uh, due to the nature of our business, uh, being in financial, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, favorable for us to really move all of the data into a hosting solution. So because of, this, because of the security reasons, uh, I think it was, uh, it was not considered. So we, as, as I was saying, we went with a multi-cluster architecture where each line of business have their own clusters uh, so that they have a lot of independence in terms of how they manage, scale, and support those clusters. So with the architecture we went, I think the big challenge we started looking at is the licensing model. Primarily, as you all might know, Tableau provides core-based licensing model 
and it also provides user-based licensing model. Uh, core base, right, for most part, uh, has set number of cores. You have this flexibility of adding as many users as you want, but at some point, you run out of the capacity in terms of like adding more users or adding more content, and you run into, pro into problems with, with, the, uh, with the performance. So that's what we are experiencing on-prem. Uh, and with the architecture, we are going with multi-cluster architecture. I think you need many, many more cores to handle your business workload. So we adopted a user-based licensing model, which really provides great, great deal of flexibility for us to deploy uh, as many clusters as we want with as many cores as we want. Uh, it does have each we have to still license uh, per user, uh, but I think if you look at the grand scheme of things in terms of uh, the number of users, the amount of content we have, the amount of visualization we do, uh, we felt that user-based licensing model is more favorable for us. Uh, one thing I would call out here, hey, this scenario uh, in terms of what option we picked uh, might have been good for us, so you have to make assessment of your needs, your objectives, uh, to look at what licensing model works for you. So I touched a little on about securing data source connectivity. Uh, one of the key thing is as we are moving data to cloud, we needed to make sure that we connect to AWS sources like EMR and S3, uh, uh, Postgres. I think we, we are yet to do the Redshift uh, but making sure that we work with Tableau to get the right drivers to connect, test, and, and, and automate all that connectivity uh, to ensure the line of business really doesn't uh, spend a whole lot of time uh, reinventing the wheel. The other challenge, this is where we spend a lot of, lot of time, uh, and, and uh, the, the aspect of still having the ability to access on-premise data sources. Uh, the first one is file share, data analysts and data scientists, if, if any of you are one of them, still love Excel, CSV, access databases, right? They, they want to still visualize using uh, those sources, and we clearly heard in the beginning uh, when we started this initiative, loud and clear from all of our user community that they would really need to continue to have that flexibility of having a file share and having ability to access all these data sources. Uh, so we looked at various options. I think where we ended up with it is like establishing a uh, Windows file share, uh, which is encrypted and mounted on an EC2 instance where our Tableau uh, cluster uh, resides. So that really provides them still the ability for them to visualize the data uh, from the, the encrypted file share. We have pretty much, for most part, we have connected to all on-prem RDBMS. Uh, I think we have still SQL Server. Uh, that's one thing which is pending. And the other thing uh, about composite federated uh, data source, that's one thing we haven't yet tackled because uh, Tableau at, in their current version, uh, which we are using, which is 10.47, doesn't support composite connectivity. So we are working with them. I think it looks like their latest version would provide that ability. So we have to upgrade to make sure that uh, we have that uh, ability going forward. So to touch on the architecture itself and what does our deployment look like, um, like we have gone through like what were the objectives so far, right? What were the, some of the challenges, I think, Looking at the architecture is uh, pretty important. Um, so on-prem, as I was saying, we have one cluster uh, with one primary and two worker nodes, serving pretty much most of our enterprise. Uh, and we are running into issues there uh, with, the, with the capacity. So we are migrating that to a more scalable architecture where in cloud we are having one or more clusters for within each line of business AWS accounts. 
Uh, we are starting with one cluster, but I think depending on the business need, they could have even multiple clusters uh, within, uh, within their account. And they can scale horizontally, add more nodes if they need to, or they can add more cluster if they need to. So that is the, the, that, that's the great flexibility with the architecture we have defined and the licensing model we have gone with. So, so that's kind of like really gives you the conceptual view of it. A uh, little bit on the implementation itself, right? We, we moved from the old core base where we had the interactor, publisher type of users to more of a new licensing model, creator, explorer, and viewers. We have, as I was talking, the Tableau server uh, cluster uh, in cloud to do the data visualization, consuming the, uh, the different AWS sources through the computer analyze layer, right? Primarily using Presto here uh, to connect to S3 data through EMR. Um, and Hive is used uh, in some cases. Uh, we are looking to leverage Athena and Redshift Spectrum uh, going forward, not at enabled. The other tool we use internally is the data mirror, which is more of a data preparation tool. And some of the, not every line of business uh, use that, but some of them use it. So data scientists have the ability to prep the data and visualize the prep data uh, using Tableau. So the, just the workflow itself is, uh, and then we have the on-prem database. Uh, the creators who were in the old, old uh, model were publi uh, publishers, right, basically create uh, their visualization, accessing the, uh, the AWS uh, compute uh, layer, as well as the on-premise data through JDBC, ODBC connectivity, um, and then publish that workbook to Tableau Server from where the viewers and the explorers consume the visualization. Uh, not a whole lot of details here, but just wanted to give a conceptual uh, view and some details around what are the different services uh, we leverage. And I think through this conference, I also came to know, which I think uh, intrigues me a little bit in terms of uh, we are doing uh, SageMaker implementation, so came to know that uh, Tableau had introduced connectivity to SageMaker as well. So it will be interesting as, as the models are built into SageMaker and how we leverage the, the, the recommendations out of those models into Tableau visualization. So, so something we will be looking into uh, exploring. So after defining the architecture, one, one of the things we started thinking like we in our current state, we have around 8,000 plus users. We have roughly 3,000 plus uh, content workbooks. Uh, so how do we deal with the challenge of migrating all that into cloud? Um, we looked at making our user and, and business life easier by trying to automate this. We looked at a backup and restore option. We looked at site export import option. Uh, we looked at, hey, can we do, do a batch job where we can use the Tableau APIs to do some of this conversion? Unfortunately, we ended up with a little bit of a manual content publishing approach. Uh, the reasons being, uh, as I, was, I have been talking about, right, our data sources are changing as we are moving data from, from on-prem to cloud. Uh, and we are changing the, how we connect to the data, data sources as well from uh, unsecured to more of a secure connectivity. And in many cases, um, the publishers and the creators have to really modify their, their workbooks. So we couldn't really um, take advantage of what some of the automation the Tableau provides with backup and restore and site import export. Um, and I think there were some issues with even the compatibility. We use uh, a pretty old 9.3 on-prem and uh, uh, in cloud it is uh, 10.47. So due to some of these reasons, we ended up kind of like taking the route of uh, uh, manual content publishing. The good thing is I think as you move, you're not taking 
lot of clutter with you, right? It's more cleaner approach, and, and I think it's, and in some cases we are seeing that, I think, uh, we, we are seeing the con content creator optimizing how they are visualizing the data as well. So, I'll pause a, a little bit here, right, just to recap. Uh, so we have looked at what, what were the objectives as we started this journey. We did, took a look at like what were the different challenges, what architecture we defined, what we did with the content migration. Um, and where we are right now is we have enabled automated Tableau clusters. So you might all be thinking like, hey, with this architecture, there will be so many different clusters. How are you going to really uh, support that, right? So we have created an automated uh, Tableau cluster install cloud formation template, which will help line of business to really spin up their cluster uh, within a day time frame. I think it should do it in, uh, from last I heard, like 20 minutes if everything goes well. Uh, the cluster should be up and running. We have already enabled multiple Tableau clusters across enterprise, both in production as well as non-production. And we have enabled key data sources, as I was talking, both on-prem as well as AWS, and more, more to be enabled going forward. Uh, user content, uh, user and content migration process uh, in, in progress. Uh, so it, I think we, we expect, I think by probably in sometime in next quarter, we should, or first quarter of next year, we should be done with the migration effort. So as, as I have been talking about, right, I think the journey we are going through, establishing the new architecture, establishing all the processes, procedures in terms of data governance, and, and going through the, the, the whole migra uh, the user and content migration, we feel pretty confident, right, whatever the objectives and outcomes we have laid out, for most part, we will be able to address them. So I started off with my talk with saying that, hey, I was scared when I started this. Uh, with what I shared today, right, we have gone through a lot of challenges. I feel that I'm, I'm confident, right, in terms of meeting all these objectives. So the next steps we have going on is, even though we have created uh, automation in terms of creating clusters, business, uh, each line of business has the ability to really par parameterize in terms of how many nodes they want, right? How big uh, cluster they want, how, how small a cluster they want, but it's not auto-scaled yet. So our focus going into next year would be, hey, how do we auto-scale this? Make it highly available. Uh, and how do we enable additional data sources as we were talking about? Upgrade to 2018.x, uh, or it will be mostly 2018.2 going into 20, uh, second qu first quarter of 2018. Uh, leveraging Tableau hyper capabilities, I think Tableau has been talking about it in terms of uh, the ability and the performance it provides, so we will be doing uh, a lot of POCs and, and trying to enable that uh, capability as we upgrade to 2018.2. Uh, and the other thing we are thinking about is as number of clusters are growing, is there an easy way for the line of business to spin up their cluster with the new upgrades, new patches through a service catalog enablement? So that's another thing we are looking to do. So the key takeaways I want uh, this group to, to have is in terms of our experience Looking at security and data governance considerations, uh, as you are looking to move your workload from on-prem to cloud, it's pretty critical that you think through all aspects of security and data uh, as, as you uh, make uh, your migration effort. And architectural impact. So your current implementation could be different, but you, you gotta think different as you move to cloud depending on how your data is laid out in cloud uh, and what are your major objectives as an enterprise. Uh, so you got to make some changes as you, uh, as you go to cloud. And to go with the architecture is, hey, what licensing model you really want to adapt, right? So that's, that's a consideration uh, you need to have because that highly, 
that impacts not only like what flexibility you get, but the cost concentration there. And thinking about content and user migration strategy. In our case, we took a manual content migration approach. That doesn't mean you cannot take advantage of the, the, uh, the automated way of doing things. So pretty critical there. So that's it. Uh, it concludes my part of the presentation. We will be more well, it, more it years. doesn't. It doesn't conclude it entirely because yeah. uh, we left some time for Q and A. Um, I'm going to start with a question that I didn't tell Sharon about in advance. So <laughs> I just like to put, be a little tricky with him. Um, and after I ask that question, I think where are the microphones? Are they? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, if there's somebody maybe that can help run that microphone around or, or stand in the middle here, because um, you've got a unique chance to ask somebody that's uh, uh, maybe a little ahead of you on the, on the journey here, um, some, some questions that might be on your mind. Um, my question is, so uh, how did you find working with AWS and Tableau, and what advice would you give to everybody here in terms of how demanding to be, where, where to ask for help? Um, what, what, what did that kind of look like? So I think, great question, because as I was telling my story about how scared I was, one of the reasons I was scared was we did not have the expertise with cloud, not Tableau being in cloud, right? Um, I think even Tableau was really early in, in its journey in terms of moving to cloud. So as we started working with Tableau, it has been great, great experience so far, and, and I think whenever we had issues, we had Amazon services really helping with their effort as well. So awesome. Good partnership so far. Yeah. Yeah. Any advice on what to add, where to ask for help? I think you work with your contacts, yeah. right? uh, whether it is in sales or whether it is in, in the support area. OK. Cool. They have been great. Other questions? Kim's got a microphone up here, but we can also repeat them if the microphone doesn't make it to you. Yeah, um, thanks. First of all, great talk. Thank you. Uh, in this multi-cluster architecture you use, do you have a single pane of glass management? And in, in fact, what does your management console look like from an operational perspective? If that makes sense. So I think each cluster have their own admin console, right, where you manage. So the way we were looking at it is uh, each line of business have their uh, admin uh, cluster and the admin console, and there are uh, site admins going into those admin console to, to manage their workload. I don't know if that is the so, question. So basically, they're independent clusters. They are independent clusters. And, and just as a follow-on, you didn't discuss um, availability concerns. Were there particular things you needed to address in that area? And if so, what, what were they? Yeah, so the, the, the current deployment we have is uh, it's, uh, it's a single region uh, deployment of cluster, right? So, so we don't have fully availability enabled yet. So that's our focus going into next year, where we want to make Tableau available in, in multi-region, multi-AV uh, uh, availability zones uh, going forward. But that's one object use I think we, we are working towards. But I think one other challenge we are facing in the space of like, hey, as we go through this multi cluster environment, and I think this is where I think we need to work with Tableau, is how are we going to have a consolidated view of the usage of the, the platform? So I own this platform across enterprise, but we want to provide flexibility and independence to all line of business. But as an owner, I want to have a broader view of what is the usage across all the platforms. Uh, because there are licensing considerations we need to look at, and there are capacity considerations we need to look at. And also we need to look at like what are the Amazon uh, resource utilization across enterprise. So that's one challenge I think uh, we are uh, talking to Tableau. Uh, they have discussed, they have created something, some workbook type for other clients. Uh, we want to see how that uh, uh, works for us and how we can leverage that. Great question, Psyche. I think there's another one over there. 
Can you share your journey if uh, Tableau works well with uh, live connectivity with data sources, or do you do extracts? And if you do extracts, which data source has performed well for you? So is your question about doing live connection versus extract for certain data sources? So both. Do you do live connections? Pardon me? Do you do live connections? Yes, we do. Which backend do you have? Pardon me? Which backend works best for you for performance? Because I think it depends on the use case, though, right? Uh, obviously, the extract works better in many cases because you can pre-stage the data and, and do the visualization. But I think each individual use case uh, dictates whether you do extract or, or do the live connection. But I think there is one. Uh, my friend here from uh, one of our line of business uh, pointed me <laughs> to talk about a challenge we have uh, been facing with, uh, with Tableau, uh, and that is uh, doing extract for huge amount of data, right? Uh, so they have a use case where they have to download like 16 million records, right? So Tableau has a limitation, and that limitation is I think 6 million, Dennis? Yeah, 6 million uh, records you can download. So that is the limitation, uh, only limitation we have run into. But otherwise, I think we have left to the business areas to decide when they want to do extract versus live connections. Uh, in, in most cases, uh, like if, if, the date, the, if they are OK with the stale data, they go with the extract. But in, in cases where they really need the fresh data, they go with the live connection. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll build on that uh, a little bit more while uh, Kim brings the microphone over. Um, it also depends a little bit on what optimization you've done in those data sources. Okay. Uh, and so to the extent that um, a live connection will take advantage of that, um, that's been another place that we've seen people kind of relieve performance concerns and take advantage of what they've already built. We have a question there. Hi, this is a little bit off piece given this is more of like an infrastructure migration story. Um, but could you give us a little insight in how you think about the things that write on top of the stack? Um, uh, model governance, for example? So, from a governance perspective, I think the, the key um, challenges we were running was Tableau provides a great deal of flexibility in terms of how you access the data, how you download the data, right? And it can have pretty critical PII data, right? I think that's, like, how do you control that? Is, is that the question? Uh, so in, in the on-prem environment, we did not have any control, right? So people have flexibility, and I think within their business group, probably they had some processes around it. But I think in the new model, we have uh, a risk-established risk process, which each uh, business use case has to go through, get approval, in terms of what is the data, how that data is used, right, and how that data is being shared across different users. So I think it's, it's more uh, a process-driven uh, mechanism to, to make sure that you have governance over what the data, data is being, being accessed. One of, the, one of the ideas that we've um, seen people embrace, I think I might be messing yeah. with the... Um, that we've seen people embrace on the governance side is, is that when you have people using uh, the system that you're providing for them, you're in a much better situation to govern um, it, as versus the other situation where they're downloading data into spreadsheets and emailing it around and things like that. And so um, we capture a lot of the uh, data about usage and things in Tableau. You can mine your own intelligence on top of that. So you can do um, Tableau analysis to see you know, what's usage look like, what are the places where capacity is an issue, um, things like that. And so that, that is kind of a fundamental you know, thought process that we see some of the forward-leaning customers, like don't start with control necessarily, but start with everybody using one thing that now I can monitor. And, and, and so that's a, a conversation that we've been having quite a bit. Yeah. There's a question over there. Yeah. You have uh, this user-based uh, licensing. So how do you kind of segregate like internal users or power users versus uh, external users who are just viewing, maybe like account holders? Or, uh... So good question, right? I think um, as I was explaining, I think probably it, was, it did not come through clearly. We have two deployments, one for external, one for internal, okay. right? 
So for external deployment, we have just kept the core based as is. We haven't even moving to cloud right now. It's the internal ad hoc environment which is being migrated to cloud. And all of the user base in internal are user based licensing model. Okay. Yeah. So for external, do you have any suggestions or any directions we could uh, kind of go? I, I think from from my perspective, right, I think that is the assessment we want to make going into sure. 2019 uh, because the use case there is more of an embedded approach, right? So embedded uh, application. So we have an external facing web application and Tableau visualization is embedded into that. Yeah. Uh, so it's a little different, right, based, based on the use case, right? It might favor uh, keeping core base. So we have to make some assessment around uh, the flexibility we want with that, right, and, and uh, the cost, cost implications. So that's one of the reasons we have not tackled it right now. Uh, but, but I think that's something we want to address because at the end of the day, if all the data moves into cloud, we got to address that. I'll just, I'll just add to that. Um, in terms of what's possible, those scenarios where you're getting to external users, let's say your own customers, perhaps your partner network or your supplier network, um, you can do it in both ways. So you can license it by user, but you can also license it uh, more on a core basis, which is um, common there because you might not want to do named users. You might want to just be able to do a level of concurrency. So both of those things are possible. Um, and, uh, and I agree with Sharon. Like, assessing your specific situation you'll have I, to do. I think one word of advice I could give in that sense, I think because that's something we were considering when we were looking at the internal is, uh, you might want to look at the speed at which your user base grows versus the speed at which your data and the compute grows. <laughs> so that should dictate what your strategy should be, whether to pick a core based or a user based. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think probably you can shed some light. I think we have been talking with Tableau about a hey, usage based model, which I think they don't have right now, right? I think. Great point, because even in our use cases, many a times, like, there are users who will just use it once a year or twice a year, right? How do we deal with that? So our, uh, our models have changed quite a bit, even over the last year. Um, and so um, feedback taken. Uh, and I'm around after the session if you want to talk some more. Yeah, OK, great. Thank you. I think there was a question. No? Down. OK, it was already answered. Is there any other questions? Got a few more minutes. Oh, there's one there in the middle. I'm not surprised there are a lot of licensing questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So I know you quickly mentioned um, you guys do manual content publishing for pulling the data. I know you guys sort of went really high level. Um, is there any more details you can share regarding that, how you guys' process works? Um, if we can meet offline, we can, we can talk a little bit about it. OK. Yeah. Was it? Was it just kind of a mass migration, or did you, did you like sequence how people move? Did you sort of target specific communities or specific workbooks that you wanted to move? So we, we provided an inventory of the sites and the workbook for each line of business. OK. Right, like we have uh, Denise from retail line of business here, right? Her group take ownership of prioritizing what workbook and site they want to migrate. So they, they have been doing really, really good in terms of keeping up with the speed of migration. So I think like the, the, the guidance we were giving to uh, the line of business is, hey, here is your list. Here are the number of workbooks. Uh, and what they realized, there are many of them, they really don't even need to move. Uh. Right? That, that, that was uh, pretty uh, 
Yeah, like, I wasn't they expecting that. They weren't being used anymore? or Some of them were not yeah. being used. Yeah. Uh, and some of them were not performing. They had to retool it or reauthor it, right? refactor it. Uh, but, but I think uh, we did not really mandate, like, hey, here is what you need to do, right? It's, it's left to the discretion of the line of business because they had priority in what data they are mowing, and, and I think we wanted to make sure that we align with their goals and their objectives. And this model really, what I like about this model, our architecture is, it provides that independence for the line of business yeah. versus putting a mandate for everybody to like doing it at once. Going back to the earlier question, then that's a little bit of a trade-off that you're making on you know, one pane of I glass. I think the, the question is more around the data sources. Is, is that what you, yeah. Yeah, not, not the content micro. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm sorry, I misinterpreted your question. Yeah. Yeah, but that, the, to summarize some of what you were finishing on there, that flexibility between the, the line of business units that they got, and then what you've had to do to try and get a view across that, some yeah. of the first questions that were asked. That's a little bit of a yeah, make, uh, consideration, consideration you have to make yeah. there. Yeah. Is there another question or two, or has everybody been able to ask what they, they meant to ask? Oh, yeah. Um, you mentioned you're, you own a bunch of BI tools. Have you attempted this with any other BI tools besides Tableau yet? I'm not able to hear Could clearly. You, you said. Uh, you mentioned you're the owner or application owner for a suite of BI tools. Yes. Have you attempted this with any other BI tools yet? Just the visualization aspect of it or, or migrating to cloud? Migrating to cloud. So we. So we, we have a mix of different tools where some of the tools we have directly enabled in cloud, right? Uh, I think this is one of the big platform we are migrating from on-premise to cloud. So there are a couple of others we are migrating, uh, but I think different strategy in, in, with, with those things. Okay, if you don't mind giving a nice round of applause for Sean. Thank you all. Thank you for sticking around. I hope it was valuable, and, and have a great rest of the conference.